Tonight league and coached over a span of 40 years. And although he has hints of his past on display in his restaurant, it is filled with jerseys of other notable local athletes from the past, all of which stir the conversations while enjoying a great dog. Ernie's first love, as is most of us, is his family. Nothing else takes precedent. His business is an extension of his family, always reaching out to help anyone who asks. He has coached every local level of baseball, sponsored even more. Since the start of 2004, he has been involved with St. Christopher's Church, currently as a Eucharistic minister, along with his granddaughter Brenna, fundraising for the church and the school and even putting on his old, really old, coaching hat. He coached the girls' basketball team. Let me assure you, Gino Oriema, he is not. <laughs> But he did such a great job with the kids that he was given the Hopes Award by the principal and the class yearbook was dedicated in his name. Ernie said he was grateful that it wasn't given posthumously. <laughs> his business regularly raises funds for multiple sclerosis and breast cancer and has always been a big supporter of East Hartford High School athletics. The United Way, the Greater Hartford YMCA, the East Hartford Chamber, and he now has an annual scholarship given to a Goodwin College student. He's a prominent member of his church, continually volunteers his time, his talent, and his treasure. His business he was born into, his life has been about giving back. Recently he was awarded the Vocational Service Award from the East Hartford Rotary Club, acknowledging his lived example of service above self. <coughs> you have chosen well. Ernie Huck will once again Make the town of East Hartford proud as its Irish honoree. Congratulations, Ernie. practice how the sash goes on so that you help him get dressed on parade morning because he's not going to know how to do it, I guarantee it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too much. Larson, it's your turn again to speak a few words. How could I follow my brother Danny like that, for God's sake? You know, he was my mother's favorite son. Yeah, no, 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 Timmy's the youngest. Timmy's the youngest, but Danny was my mother's favorite son. We used to tie him to a tree when he was young. That explains a lot of things about him. <laughs> but we have a couple of presentations. Uh, I can say it no better than my brother Danny about uh, both Eileen and, and Ernie and their families and what they represent uh, to our community. Uh, what a wonder that uh, Ernie's mother-in-law, Mrs. Proctor, is here, who's going to be 95 years old. Would you please all rise and give her a
<laughs> and on behalf of these uh, two East Hartford recipients, we wanted to make a, a donation of $2,500 to the parade committee uh, so that they can put that for what is an incredible thing that we do, the best parade anywhere in the state of Connecticut. And the outpouring of a community. And, and uh, Sana, can I give you this the, the check? And thank you for all your, your hard work. And just a, uh, a, a brief word about my dear friend. Uh, as anyone in Washington knows, the uh, punchline for just about everything I say is, how will it play at Augie and Ray's? <laughs> and that is so true. I was saying to Eileen and uh, her daughter who gets, did such a wonderful job about the ability of the Irish to rally hearts to fire center. Well, that's an old saying. It's because you would gather at the hearth. And the hearth of East Hartford is Augie and Ray's. We're a little upset. Yes, We're a little upset that Uncle Fred isn't here today. <laughs> and I want it to be duly noted in the annals that when Ernie received this award, where was Fred? You know? And uh, I, I know he's down in Florida, South Carolina, wherever he is, grumping about scores. Or something, but uh, Ernie, I just want you to know that the rest of the, the entire East Hartford community is here on your behalf. And... Uh, can say it no better than my brother, how important and vital a person you are to our community, your family, this great state of Connecticut, and the country. God bless Gene, of course. I've <laughs> put up with this all these years. Thank you so much. God bless. I would point out that the others will be handing out these you know, <laughs> other citations, etc. But uh, here, let's give this to your Sam. grandson Sam to hold. And uh, <laughs> God bless. Thanks very much. All right, Sam. Oh, Sam. Nice try, guys. I caught that. At this point in time, I'd like to invite <laughs> Senator Tim Larson, who <laughs> is in the tan jacket. <laughs> I would like to say a couple words for Ernie. <laughs> You're probably relying. Danny's got to go to the next event. I actually like this one because it comes complete with a speech, a couple of pens. You can tell they're the older ones in the group because they use these uh, these cheaters, you know, these glasses. Uh, Jeff, are you going to come up and help me with this again? I'm getting old, you know. I'm getting. But I will say this fits me pretty good. I think he got this off George Stewart. Remember George Stewart from First Federal Savings and Loan? He used to walk around with one of these jackets. I feel so good this day, you may never see this again. Ernie, this is a great tribute to you. I'm so excited to be part of your very special day. Um, Ernie and I, uh, in late January, actually competed in the Brian Asselton Road Race. And not bad for a guy his age who gets around pretty darn good for a, a, a veteran and a guy that I have the utmost respect for, and it's John. And Danny and everyone else will comment on you and your wonderful family and your huge heart for our great city. Congratulations Thank on everything much. that you do for us. Thank you. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be able to present this to your new staple of the East Hartford community. Thank you very much. So this is introduced by myself, uh, Representative Henry Jenga, Representative Jason Rojas, and Senator Tim Larson. Be it hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to Ernie Hutt in recognition of being selected as the town honoree representing East Hartford for the 2015 St. Patrick's Day Parade. You have shared your passion and knowledge of Irish culture with many people in Connecticut throughout your life. Congratulations and thank you for your service. 
The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success. Given this the eighth day of February 2015 by Martin Looney, the President Pro Tem, Speaker of the House, Jay Brennan Sharkey, and Denise Merrill, Secretary of State. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have one quick stage announcement. There are raffle tickets available for sale up here. Danny and John, you know, uh, Saturday's Valentine's Day, so, you know, there's plenty of nice things up here for your... For your <laughs> Thank you for that, Tim. I promise we get weekend. It's point in time. Marcia LeClaire. And Pussy. Oh, For sure, I'm not going to be racy like Dan Larson. <laughs> I don't have the money to give away that John does, and uh, I don't, I don't fit into that coat. So, <laughs> uh, time and time again, you say the one thing that the Irish Club does is really know how to celebrate things, and every year they seem to get it right. Every year when they present who the honoree are, it will be, and the town marshal. It's just amazing to to be here in their presence with their, their family because of, there is one continual theme consistently. Not only are people sincerely proud of their Irish heritage, but those that might not necessarily be Irish that you've celebrated and honored, um, there is that love of family, love of community, and um, uh, taking the gifts that you've been given and passing them along. So I couldn't think of anyone finer than Ernie to me uh, the honoree this year because he does certainly exhibit all of those characteristics and he is passionate about the town of East Hartford. No one knows that more than John Morrison, right? John? Um, well, there is one thing. Your grandchildren. But they really, they're, the, it's family, but they really are um, something that Ernie is very proud of and consistently will talk about. We're fortunate in East Hartford that we have a, not only Ernie and the heritage that he brings to Ogden and Braves, but also the dedication and the passion uh, to pass it along and to have a, a friendly faces when you walk in uh, there or you need something. I know that Augie's is the first place um, all the organizations in town will go to for support. So thank you, Ernie, on behalf of all the people that you, you have touched their life. So the proclamation that I'll read today uh, will read, whereas Ernie Hutt is a lifelong resident of the great town of East Hartford, born on December 3rd, 1942, the third son of Raymond and Elizabeth Hutt. Ernie spent his early years growing up in Maybury Village with his four siblings, moving at the age of 10 with his family to Forest Street. And whereas Ernie will always be known for his passion and involvement in sports. As a child, Ernie played for the East Hartford National Little League team received the Kerry Maguire Award for Top Athlete um, of 1960 during his senior year at East Harvard High School. And for seven years, he played with the Greater Hartford Twilight League. In later years, Ernie could be found coaching numerous youth sports teams, pictures of which are proudly displayed at the restaurant Augie and Ray's. And whereas Ernie's legacy will be his commitment to East Hartford, starting work with his father at their restaurant Augie and Ray's in 1960, Ernie has been a pillar of this community for 55 years. Living by the example started by his father, Ray, Ernie is an avid supporter of East Harper's athletics, the YMCA, the Chamber of Commerce, and most recently, supporting a scholarship foundation for Goodwin College. Ernie also raises funds for the Jimmy Fund, Breast Cancer, and a multitude of worthy organizations. Ernie is also involved in fundraising for his church. St. Christopher's and its school. In 2012, he was given the Hope Award, and in 2013, the class yearbook was dedicated in his name. And whereas Ernie's dedication to community, 
and family is easily reflected in his loving marriage to his wife, Jean, and their children, Kimberly, Kristen, Kevin, Kelly, and Lisa. His 10 grandchildren, Michael, Seth, Gabriel, Sam, Chase, Cole, Uh, Kian. 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 Kian, Chloe, and Talia, that's beautiful, and Brenna, as well as three great-grandchildren, Ava, Mickey, and Anna. And now, therefore, I, Marcia LeClaire, join with the members of the East Harbor Town Council, and with family, friends, and members of the community to honor Ernie Hutt for the St. Patrick's Day Town Honorary. And we're looking forward to having you with us on St. Patrick's Day. So if you'd like to say a few words, I'll turn the podium over to you. And I'll pass this on to your grandkids, and they can bring that over to the table. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? And Teresa warned me, don't wear this crowd out. <laughs> so if I start to wear anybody out, let me know. <laughs> I want to thank the committee. They work very hard, sauna, and everybody, <laughs> the kitchen staff. The meal was great. <laughs> Happy birthday to my mother-in-law. We gave up her party today for this. Oh. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so happy to have Father Tim Hickey, who is doing a great, great, great job. And I'm very, very proud of him here. He gave up his afternoon. And I'm really happy to see Sister Peggy Evans over there. Sister Peggy. Yeah. All my friends that have showed up, I really, really appreciate that. My family, my siblings, all my friends. Thank you very much. Uh, my Irish heritage. And I took Brent up to the cemetery. Oh, probably a couple years ago. And I'm very proud of my grandparents that come over from Austria. And I found out recently that my uh, grandfather was actually in school with Adolf Hitler. And Brenna did, a, Brenna did a report up at East Catholic a couple years ago. And she uh, did some investigation on it. And but getting back to my art heritage, my grandma, <laughs> my grandma, my grandma, Barbara and Billy, my cousins here, they, they had the pleasure to live uh, on Burnside Avenue. And they lived in a free family. There was their own house, but they were very, very close to my grandma, Mary Dowdy. And she was a wonderful, wonderful person. And I hear so many great stories. And Fred Clark always teased me, how can I let a crowd get an Irish award? Well, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, grew up in Maryby Village. And I'm going to try to run through this. And I'm very, very proud of Maryby Village. And uh, some of the things I remember in Maryby Village were the camaraderie, the friends, and uh, how many guys come from Maryby Village? Yeah. And that's just, and the others. And the others, Sister Peggy over there, we were seeing her the other day, 
And the others all wish that you came from Maryville Village. <laughs> Anyways, getting back to Maryville Village, I, I learned, uh, I, I got all my, my, my skills, my competitiveness. A couple of things I remember were going up to Cannon's store. I'd come out of the house, I'd say hello to Billy Wade, and walk up there. And there's this cute little blonde that lived at 54 Gray Hill Road. And she was always on her little tricycle, checking me out. <laughs> little did she know, little did she know, being such a good girl, she would wind up with me. <laughs> My friends, Patsy, Fly, Ball, Long Ball, and Slim. They gave her the name St. Jean a few years ago. Thank you, Jean, for staying with me. We moved up to Forest Street. Forest Street was something else. I cried when I left Mary Village. My brother Ray doesn't believe it. But anyways, they did. But the big thing I remember about Mary Village was we had the church there, we had everything there. And one of my better stories about the church was, is that Sonny Slain, who was the toughest guy in the village, he was only beat four times in his career. And Sonny was a real good friend, we knew him later on, a real good guy, but he suffered four losses. Three of them were to my brother Ray. <laughs> and one of them was to Father Munich. <laughs> Father Munich didn't like the way he was acting in catechism one day and knocked him out. <laughs> and like my brother Ray put in the book about East Harvard, he said, when you went to church, which is now the Larson building, that if you misbehave, you make you kneel in the back of the church. And one thing I'll say about my parents, my mom and dad, they stayed together and everything. And when you got home, that was the easiest thing that happened. Then when you really got it when you got home. <laughs> my mom and dad were what started me out. My dad taught me from right and wrong. I gotta say that he he showed me and told me how to how to grow up to be respected, be a man. And I can't thank my mom enough for everything that she did. Back then, the fathers worked and the mothers stayed home. And my mother did a wonderful job like Mrs. Larson and the rest of you mothers that were up in the village. Everybody got, everybody did what they had to, but it was a great place. And we got through something about, with my mom. My mom got sick when we moved up to Forest Street. She was away at Gaylord Farm for 18 months. She had a lung taken out with tuberculosis. My mom, I love her so much. And I think the big thing I learned about my mom, and my brother Ray will tell you, mom was not a whiner. She never complained, she hung in there, and she raised five great kids. Mary and Elizabeth over there, and Butch is down in Florida, but I really, really say, I got my intestinal fortitude from my dad, and my love, and my giving from my mom. And they're watching me here, I love you. When I went to high school, when I went to high school, and my freshman year, I'm a hot shot. I'm on the football team, and my dad's bragging that I'm the next Sam Huff. <laughs> I was the next Sam Huff until the report cards come out. <laughs> <laughs> the report cards come out, and Elizabeth and Mary can tell you I was the finale. <laughs> my brother Ray went to Yukon. Butch had a one-day trip up at Yukon. Mary went to college, and Will, a graduate of East Catholic, she lost somewhere. Well, mine was a finale. Well, I flunked off the football team. So my father said, how can you flunk off the football team? What are you doing with those books? I said, I'm studying. <laughs> so he grabbed me by the shirt. He says, come here, I'm going to introduce you to somebody. He walks me into the bathroom and puts me up against the mirror. He says, you can BS, I'd use the other word, but in respect to father, says, you can BS your mother and you can BS me and you can BS your teachers, but you look at the mirror. And you tell me you're going to BS that guy that's looking at you. And if you do, you got a problem. Well, needless to say, that was the last time I flunked off the football team. 
And I think that one of the nicest things about high school was we had a cheer, and my cousin Barbara was a cheerleader. Hot, hot, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. And Barbara had my name. Well, unfortunately, hot, hot couldn't do it. And no one could. We wound up two and six. <laughs> <laughs> Hank Giardi, our coach, who we all know, one of my greatest inspirations in life. When I went into the service, things got tough, and I always thought about Coach Hank. I couldn't quit. Hank didn't want any quitters. Thank you very much, Hank. And he also showed me how to get through tough things in life, and we all know what we're talking about. I love you, Hank. Uh, out of high school... I went, I'm, I hope I'm not wearing anybody out. <laughs> out of high school. I'm just seeing how many pages you have. Out of high school, out of high school, out of high school, that's it. Out of high school, I went into service. I was in uh, Fort San Houston during the Cuban crisis, which was a tough thing. I come out, and in 1965, my family started with Kimberly Allen. And as a first child in a family, it was so important to have a good kid, and she did a wonderful job. And then I had uh, Kristen, Kevin, Kelly, and Lisa. And I'll tell you, they've been wonderful, wonderful girls. And I've got my grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, my grandchildren. And I can't thank enough. And I, I bet, Mom, I'm going to try to get it off here. But anyways, uh, <laughs> One thing, as far as with Kevin, he started the ball rolling with my, uh, with my sport, my coaching. And he gave me an awful lot. Uh, he played with Mark Castorino, the Castorinos here, my neighbor, and I coached him at Little League. And one thing about Kevin, and uh, that bothered me about my dad passing so early in life, is Kevin paved the way for all the athletic careers of all my children, because what he did he never left anything on the ice or anything on the baseball field. He gave it 100% all the time. And I want to thank him for being an inspiration to the rest of my children and my grandchildren. And uh, I, I can't thank this committee enough. And I want to end saying that I have enjoyed myself tremendously. And taking a word from Bobby Knight, a local athlete, and I don't want to say it's my saying. I do try to treasure sayings. Is the good Lord... If I ever come back, I only want to come back as Ernie Hutt, and I do want to spend some time in Memory Village. Thank you very much. All right.